Hola, hola. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Mujer de Éxito Unbounded, Woman of Success Without Limits. This is Marty Angel, your host, and I am so incredibly grateful for you to be here on this podcast and this episode. You know, there are no coincidences in this world. There is no coincidence that you stop by to hear this episode. It is important that you understand that sometimes we speak English and sometimes we speak Espanol and sometimes we speak Spanglish. Hablamos Espanol, hablamos Inglés y a veces hablamos Spanglish. But anyway, you look at it. This episode is going to be amazing. Once again, this is Marty Angel, your host, Empowering Latina Coach. I am a Latina business coach, and I help the bilingual Latina women entrepreneurs, mujerpreneurs, gain clarity and focus on who they serve so they can up-level from brick and mortar to click and order and rock their six figures. I love coaching the mujerpreneur. But let's get to it. You will enjoy today's episode. I'm so excited. Hoy vamos a tener una plática sumamente importante. Yo sé que les va a gustar. Ready? And today's episode is sponsored by... Dancing crew, trip for two, nail the final interview, game with Doug, brand new mug, come here kid, give me a hug. The more you want to do, the more we want to do. Boosters designed for COVID-19 variants are now available. If you've had your primary series, schedule an updated COVID-19 booster appointment as soon as you're eligible. Sponsored by Pfizer and BioNTech. So welcome everybody to another episode here. We're video casting straight on to the YouTube to another episode of Mujer de Éxito Unbounded, Woman of Success Without Limits. And today, ahora, ladies and gentlemen, I am so excited because I actually have the creator of this beautiful lipstick that I'm wearing and uh and then it's just an amazing story from this mujerpreneur that i am so blessed to actually we're collaborators we've been on a book together and now we're going to be on a podcast together and hopefully this is not the end of our collaborative efforts uh so everybody help me in welcoming the most the most awesome mujerpreneur Beautiful creator of Besitos, premier platform, also creator, and she'll tell you about what that one means as well, Elena. So, Elena, welcome, welcome. How are you Thank today? You. Thank you, Marty. Um, thanks for having me. I am fabulous today. I can't wait to dig in and get right to all the good stuff. Okay. Well, you know, we promised the listeners because we were just on Instagram. We promised the listeners that, um, or the watchers that, um, you had a special story. You're a successful right now. You're a successful, um, coach, mm -hmm. speaker, mother, um, job person, and also the creator of this amazing, uh, line of besitos. So everybody, it says besitos here, and I'm so excited. So she has gifted, but take a look at the beautiful, at the beautiful, beautiful packaging. All right. So look at that. Is that amazing? So I, and it's matte. I love matte liquid lipstick. Yes. And it stays on. <laughs> and I'm wearing it and it's making me feel pretty. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your story, Mija. Oh, goodness. Um, yes, I did. I promised um, from that little Instagram live the actual detail of the story. Um, you know, life is going to hit you and it, and it has hit all of us. And in that moment, you have a choice. You have a decision. What are you going to do from here? And 
I'll just go right into it. 2018, Christmas Eve, my husband passed away from a heart attack. Oh, wow. And it was sudden, you know, um, 49 years old, but Christmas Eve. And I thought that that was the lowest that it could get. And I was wrong. <laughs> oh, wow. I was wrong. I tell you, there's nothing... There's nothing more eye opening than realizing you have been living a life that you really knew nothing about. It, it puts you in a place of who am I? How did I get here? What was I not seeing that was right in front of me? And that was actually the beginning of my complete breaking point, but that also allowed me to rebuild in a whole new way. And that's what, that's what I chose to do with it at that time. Yes. Wow. Wow. So we, we are debunking the myth that, that success comes because you're destined for it and, and all of this stuff. And sometimes I know that success comes when you least expect it. And in ways that you least expected, and it sounds like yours was a way that you least expected it. And you had a tragedy and tell me a little bit more, if it's okay with you, let's, mm -hmm. let's hear a little bit more about, um, you know, you said living a life that you, you really didn't know much about. What no. did you mean by that? Yeah, you know, he 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 was my second marriage and I wanted to be I wanted to be taken care of, you know, like I just wanted to be the wife, have my man, he had his business. You know, I was a corporate leader at the time and decided to leave my job and focus on my coaching business and all of that, but but he took care of everything. Okay. You know, he took care of finances and paying bills and and I loved that. I loved the fact that I didn't have to worry about any of that. And from the outside, um, you know, he would buy cars and boats and we had property and just things were good, right? Things were good. People came to us when they needed something. We were that go-to for the family and, and it was all good um, until he died. And I realized and learned it was all a lie, <laughs> There was so much debt. There was so many things that I did not know about that I, I just was clueless on. And as I uncovered one thing and another thing and another thing, I realized I was in a really, really bad place financially. I didn't have options. I didn't have a job. There was no backup. Like, Money was just bleeding out everywhere. Wow. And for nine months, I had to just grasp, what am I going to do? How do I stop that downward slope? Like, how do I catch myself and take mm -hmm. care of me and my family? I'm losing everything. I mean, they came and repoed cars and just, it was horrible. And so you get that footing and mm -hmm. you think, okay, okay, I can do this. I can handle this. And it was still nine months later. So we're talking, he died on Christmas, the following right. August. Right. I discovered a five-year affair. <gasps> a five-year affair. And how long were you married? I'm sorry for interrupting. We, we had been together eight years, but we had only been married two. So <gasps> she, was, she was in the picture before we married. In fact, oh, I discovered... Lord. Uh, messages and all sorts of things on our wedding day. Oh and, God. And, you know, I, I questioned for quite a while, God, like, why, why show this to me now? Right. What, like nine months later, right. why do, why do I have to see this now? And, you know, God um, spoke back to me and he said, I need you to stop wasting precious time asking questions you will never receive answers to. And that was that. a turning point. I hate that answer. <laughs> yeah, it was a turning point, but it's turned into an avenue for me to actually serve 
and help women today. I'm able to help them move forward because there's time being wasted yes. on the things we know we're never going to get an answer to. So we need to figure why out what to do with that and go forward. So, yeah. Why are we waiting? We have a tendency to do that now. Um, so I'm going to bring it around on this a little bit. That's an amazing story. First of all, I just want to say to you, my God, you talk about, you know, you, this, this podcast is about being raw and real. And I just appreciate your, your being that raw and real because it's important for us to be able to share what is that? What is that? You know, like you said, what is that? And, and taking it from, it sounded like you were surviving, you were thrashing in the water, you were surviving and you know, you're going from a surviving thing. And then all of a sudden, you know, that message you got was like a, a life raft. Yeah. And, um, so let me ask you when you got that message, what was the first thing that you did? I mean, how, what was the action you took? What did, what, what was that one thing that you decided? Because a lot of times, um, you know, we get messages now what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so here's the thing. She was in my home two days prior. I didn't, I didn't know about it. So she was in my home and, you know, we talk about that intuition that gut feeling, like something just felt off. And so it was very random that two days later, uh, I needed a phone number and because of his business. And I was still cleaning up a lot of mess stuff. And I was surprised that in his phone, he didn't have, that number wasn't in there. And I'm like, yeah, I know that the number's gotta be here. And then it dawned on me, he's got a different telephone. But all this time, I never thought of his other mm -hmm. telephone, like nine months. It just was sitting in a sitting there and because it wasn't his newest phone. Right. That he had just gotten like he had just gotten this new phone. And um, so I had to charge it. You know, I had to charge it. And I'm like, for sure, this contractor's number will be in here. And as soon as it was charged and I opened it up, like, boom, there she was like there she was. And oh, wow. it, I had a choice in that moment. And I was like, Elena, don't, don't, don't open this. Don't look. It doesn't matter. You don't need to know. And hey, I'm like everybody else. I had to know. Let me, <laughs> let me look. <laughs> and I literally scrolled and, and went through five years, five <sighs> years. I saw the progression. I saw the photo, I mean, photos messages oh on our God. wedding day. Like I saw it all. It, there was no denying. It was like in my face. Oh Lord. And, um, I re really, that's the first time I've shared it right here. Um, I feel very comfortable. Um, so in that moment, uh, because she had been texting while he was at the hospital, you know, um, so I knew who she was. Right. I just didn't, I just didn't. Was she, a, was she his secretary, his coworker? She a had friend? been a client. Ah. She had been a client and I knew okay. of her right, right away. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. And um, so I went through it and I felt like, like my stomach had just been ripped out from inside of me. Oh. Um, it was horrible. Oh. And I went through it again because I thought maybe this is all in your head. Maybe, maybe you're mm -hmm. seeing things that really aren't there and you're thinking too much of this. I really mm -hmm. thought like, no, like you're, mm -hmm. but it was right. <laughs> I read it again, all of it, five years. And I'm like, no, it's, it's there. <laughs> it's there. It's, um, and I knew in that moment, I actually went into praying for her. I prayed for her because in that moment I realized five years of being the secret and he dies who can she cry to who's there for her oh my goodness I have oh yeah where boy where girl you have a big heart yeah that's what I that's where I went 
That's where I went. And That's I thought, beautiful. you know, he's not here and she's carrying a pain. And, yeah. and, and this pain was new to me, but I had a choice to make. I had a choice to make. And um, I forgave. I forgave him. I forgave her. I never contacted her. I've never spoken her name out loud. Um, the only people that know are my mother and my two sons of, of who it is. Of who it is. Exactly. Yeah. The well, and I take that back. My sister, I have one sister, of course, my sister's going right. to know. <laughs> and then, um, just a cousin of mine that knew who she was as well. But oh, otherwise, okay. no one knows her name. I won't. I won't. I never yeah. took her. I never took her down a road of trying to make her uh, pay for something or it, it, you know, it was done. It was and, done. And at the and yes. And at the end of the day, when we, when we strike out to pain somebody else, it takes time away from our success. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if we're so focused on, on this revenge or something, this or, revenge and yeah. something like, yeah. So you got back on track girl. Yeah. That is like, okay, so now you're down, you're starting to come up and now you get hit again with this yeah. thing. Yeah. And I felt like Rocky. I felt like Rocky in the ring when you, he, <laughs> he would stand up and he'd get knocked down and, and stand up. And, and I got to a point where it was like, okay, I guess just hit me harder because I'm going to get back up. And I remember that conversation I had with God. And I said, you know, I, I look back now and I feel as hard as it was, there was so much grace that he gave me because he mm -hmm. laid everything down gently. Right. I think if I'd have gotten everything all, all at ones. once, I'd have, I don't know if I would be here. It was that bad, but yeah. he laid it down gently. And so every step of the way I had a choice to make. Yes. I could get better or I could or, stay down. Yes. And um, I chose to build. I chose to build things with it all. That's what I did. Yeah. You know, and when we, um, when we were writing the book together, I saw you, I watched you and I, and I heard you and I was like, Hmm, this is, a, she's got a, a really interesting story. And those stories, I want to say to my listeners, they don't end, um, you know, you don't get to a point at a success and then the stories end. It doesn't, it's not like, um, I want, you know, as you're becoming a mujerpreneur, basically it's, it, it's truth. I'm, it's not about how you fall. It's about how you get up. Yeah. And, and how many times you continue to get up, you continue to get up, you continue to get up. And it sounds like you've gotten up. Now, let me ask you this. Now, we'll come back to that story in a little bit. But let's go back to a little bit about, I need your help in, in debunking a myth mm -hmm. that is about that all Latinas are bilingual. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. so... I know that your story, like my last guest, um, you know, your story is different as well. So tell us a little bit, let's go back into the lightheartedness and yeah. tell me a little bit about how you ended up monolingual. You know, um, my grandfather is from Mexico. My grandmother is from Colorado. So even she was born in Pueblo, Colorado. Okay. And then they moved to Indiana to okay. work in the farm, in the fields. Okay. And they had 14 kids. Oh, that's right. That was an era. Yes. yes. 12 girls, two boys. Andale. And in, in Indiana, they they just traveled and they worked. They picked cherries. They picked tomatoes. They, they did whatever they could. And having 12 girls... My grandfather made sure that they were able to get educated, take care of themselves, should anything happen. You know, he was older. And so they moved to areas where they could get good education and they could have opportunities and jobs and all of the stuff. So so my mom went to a high school and met she went, went to an all girls or a Catholic school met my father, they became entrepreneurs. 
they became um, successful very fast at, at young ages. Like by the time they were in their 30s, they were pretty darn near millionaires at that time. They wanted the best for me and my sister. Okay. And when I say the best, I'm talking opportunities for education, you know, the best schools, all of all of the opportunity that they didn't have when they were in the fields working. Mm -hmm. So in the state of Indiana, where we lived, we moved out even further into an area uh, where the schools were small, but they were like the best in the city. Mm. And just in when you take the demographic of what you're looking for, they wanted property, they wanted to build their own home, they wanted the best schools, best education. I ended up in a school that was small, that had the kids I went to kindergarten with were the same friends I graduated with. Oh, wow. And I was the only minority, the only one up until high school. So oh, wow. everyone was white. All my friends were white. I took dance class. I was student council, cheerleader, palms, like all of these things. Um, and I never really thought anything of it. That's just where mm -hmm. I went to school. These were my mm -hmm. friends. But but then I'd go to my grandma's on the weekends and we'd go to the baile and we would do all of these things. And, and she would speak to me in Spanish and we had the traditions and the cooking and all of that. But, but during the week, I would be at school. So I felt very comfortable in both places, yet I didn't belong in either is how I felt yeah. because I would go, I had the quinceanera. I loved the dancing. I dated the band players. Like I, you know, <laughs> that was a part of who I was. Mm -hmm. And, but yet I wasn't Mexican enough uh -huh. for all of them. Uh -huh. I didn't speak the language. I thought I was a goody two shoes or they thought I was like a snob and all of this. So I wasn't good enough to fit at this table. Mm -hmm. But then yet when I'm over at this table, I'm the one that's being teased because it's like your skin must be brown because you drink too much chocolate milk. Like I learned that in like first grade. I'll never mm, forget. That's cute. That. <laughs> you know, one of one of my friends, we were in first grade. We were in art class and she said, is your skin brown because you drink too much chocolate milk? How cute is that? Just an innocent question. And yeah. I, I, I didn't even think I'm like, I don't know, may, maybe like I it just was never a thing. Right. So as I got older it became harder because I had those traditions within me. Mm. I, I spent so much time with my grandmother mm. and, you know, I wanted the husband, I wanted to be home. I wanted to just family was everything to me, mm. Mm. but yet there was something in me that was a powerhouse. I was a go-getter. I grew up with entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. my parents. So it's almost like anytime I was in this type of a relationship where I felt comfortable culturally, I wasn't able to step out and build, use my power. Okay. So it just was a weird place. And uh -huh. it's taken me a long time to find myself. <laughs> and, you know, um, and that's so important. It's like I have cousins and they don't speak a lick and and at least you're you're kind of um second generation right mm -hmm. um my cousins and i were like first generation because all of uh, and i'm talking on my dad's side of the family everybody all the siblings were all born in mexico and the rest of us you know the cousins well we were all the first ones that were born here in the us in in california and, um, you know, half of them, actually 75% of my cousins do not speak, um, Spanish yeah. and, um, and I get you, I mean, I will, you know, my parents were, were entrepreneurs and I get the, I get the white thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And people look at me right now and go, Oh, you know, you don't look blah, blah, blah. Well, my mom was my, I'm actually a lot darker than my mom. My dad, um, he was born, the, both of them were born in Mexico, but they came from, and I'm going to share just a little bit. They came from, um, my dad was half Greek and half Mexican. Okay. Mom was, um, uh, German and Spanish. Okay. And so, so she was blonde and blue eyed. Right. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. but I tan, I took out, you know, I took the Greek side. So, I mean, within, if if I'm out in the sun in, in like 20 minutes, I come back and I look radiantly bronze, (laughs) right? (laughs) So it's like, um, you know, it was just, it was different growing up. Yeah. Different growing up. But I love the fact that, um, that you said one thing you said, um, I wasn't, Mexican enough and I wasn't white enough. And I identify with that so much. And I've actually termed it to be caught in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. And how many of us Latinas, mujerpreneurs, are caught in the middle, whether or not we're monolingual or bilingual? Yeah. yeah. It's I think it's a cultural the you that you can't take you can you can take the the um language out. But like you said before, the culture lives within us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And even if we don't speak the language, um, there is that culture that almost feels like home when you're in it, you know, when you're where you're surrounded by it. Would oh, you agree? It's, it's yes. I mean, it's it's living and breathing in us. I mean, there's no denying that you're at home when you're surrounded in the environment that that your soul like resonates with. And um, there's just been so many times where I have felt that, but because I don't speak the language, I'm like, you know, kind of outcast and it's, it's hard. It's sad. It's like, you know, there's, there's another layer to us. Right. Right. Um, Right. And I'll never forget. Oh no, go ahead. Okay. So let me ask you a question. Have you ever been out and about and then somebody who speaks the language starts speaking to you in Spanish? Yep. Lots of times. <laughs> and what happens to you? What, what, what's that feeling you get or, and what, and what, you know, what do you, how do you handle that? Well, after that adrenaline shoots through my body and I get an immediate sense of, anxiety and even sweat. Like it really hits me that quickly in that moment, because now I'm, I feel off guard. I feel inadequate. I feel like all these negative things surface immediately. They really do. Um, Then I usually have to say like, I don't, you know, I understand just a little, but I can't, I don't really know what you're saying. And at that moment, if they know English, then they'll talk to me, but you can just, it, it shifts. The energy shifts. Um, but I go into kind of like a defense response. And, mm. and I think it's just from growing up when you're too young to understand that that's what's happening, but mm. you feel the anxiety of it, mm. of not belonging, you, you carry that. So even as an adult, even through messaging now, there are times where people will message in Spanish and I'll have to say, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, I understand a little, but I'm not fluent. Um, if they speak English, then the conversation will go on. And if not, then then of course it's disconnected, but I still feel less than mm. because I can't just chime back in. And I have tried, I've done like Duolingo. I've heard there's Babel. Um, And the crazy thing is, is I know the language. Like when it's those kinds of things, I I know it. But I think there's been such a trauma trigger that when I'm in that moment, I'm like, uh, uh, like it just, it doesn't come to me. Right. And that's, and I don't know if it's, if it's that anxiety that just like freezes me, it just, Mm. or I feel like, Oh my gosh, what if I don't say the right thing? What if, Mm. what if I look stupid or, you know, it's just the fear. Mm. Mm. Okay. But you, but that fear, that fear that you have, you know, it's, it's, it's very interesting because that's a fear that you have that you have put aside because Now we're going back into with everything that you've been through, you had to have the cajones to get up after your life circumstance and get back up on the saddle and, 
you know, was Besitos created before or after your husband passed? After. Okay. After. So, yeah. So, so tell us a little bit about that. So now we've got the, um, we've got the story. We know that you were hit, you know, twice and, and, um, and I'm such a blessing that you didn't take the time to work on revenge and, and blame, no. but you got up. So you got up and now tell us what, mm -hmm. how did you get up and what came first? What came next? Gosh. Well, okay. So, so 2018 Christmas Eve, he passes. And right, right. around that time, God had been telling me, you're going to write a book. You're going to write a book. And I kept mm -hmm. thinking, yeah, you got the wrong person. I, I don't <laughs> think, you know, have you ever tried to tell God, I think you made a mistake. I don't think it's me, but it started probably within eight weeks after he died. I'm like, now's the time you're going to write a book. So I actually started writing my very first book eight weeks after he died, continued, you know, having to thrive and survive and, and all of the stuff. It was the following year. I, when I say I lost everything, I literally even had to, I sold my wedding ring for 500 bucks to keep my electricity on. That's how bad the, the money situation was wow. Wow. Uh, because I, at that time I realized it was seven thousand dollar diamond I thought well the marriage obviously didn't mean anything the ring holds right. no value what holds value is keeping my electricity on so I can promote my book okay so that was right. my first book so the last piece that I lost was our home I moved moved me and my sons back in with my mom and I was scrolling through some pictures just sitting in the chair one night and I came across a picture. I had a, a really bad neck surgery. So I had this big scar and I had my lipstick on. Mm. I still had my lipstick on. Then I'm, then I'm going through and it, and it got me thinking that when, how far I had come, mm -hmm. like how, how much I had been beat down, learning about that affair was that, that final piece that really could have just broken me and right. everyone would have understood. But I still got up and my thing was put your lipstick on, girl, whether whether you can barely comb your hair or whether you want to stay in your pajamas all day or whether you want to be depressed and eat your ice cream, whatever you're doing. But put your lipstick on. OK. And lipstick for me has always represented that finishing touch. Your lipstick speaks before you do, depending on it, it shares your mood. It shares your authority. It says who you are before you even have to say a word. And when it clicked for me that that's what lipstick means to me. It, it, it's not just a cosmetic that makes you look pretty because we're all beautiful. But mm -hmm. lipstick is that get it together, girl, mm -hmm. and pull and get yourself up and then me being the entrepreneur I am, I thought, I wonder if I can make my own or I wonder if I, you know, because I love to paint and all this kind of stuff. And I thought there's no way I can actually make my own here in the kitchen. My mother would kill me because I'm staying at her house. So I started contacting people and I researched how to make it and, and, and you know, what needs to happen. And then I started contacting people that did make it manufacturers and what do I need to do and how does this work? And I, I don't, you know, I don't ever hold back when the ideas come, they come for a reason and you might not know what's going to come of it, but you'll never know if you don't right. begin. And that's really how it started. I, I did my first round of a, of a small order of tubes that I thought were good colors and people that have known me have always known I've loved lipstick. So I was so excited that this was something I was doing and that they sold like that. And I gauged my success, not by how many tubes I could sell, but by how many repeat buyers do I have. Oh, right. How many That's people beautiful. come back? Yeah. And that to me was my gauge of success. If I have somebody that comes back and wants more, then that's a good thing. And that's how I've built it. I really haven't advertised. I don't invest in marketing. It's people that know me, that love it, that tell people, that try it, they love it. And now we've shipped, I'm in Indiana and in, a, in over a year's time, we've shipped to almost to every country and Puerto Rico. So, wow. Yeah. 
Wow, that's amazing, girl. That's amazing. But you know what? Um, here's what I know. Um, let me share a little bit about. I've been around the block more than once. Mm -hmm. Um, but um, basically, it's it's almost as though you said God gives us something. So had you not had the down, I think with all you know, with everything that you went through, that down, yep. and and I don't know that that you would have gotten up so powerfully. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, when I watch, when I watch all the women, and by the way, this podcast, Mujer de Éxito Unbounded, came at one of my lowest points as well. And I had been a podcaster since 2009, but it was a different kind of podcast. And I remember sitting there and God says, you've got to tell your story. And I said, no, I'm embarrassed to tell my story. I'm embarrassed to, you know, and, and one of these days you'll have to go back, scroll back into the, and, and, um, and I start to tell my story and, um, and then just as I was, you know, ready to quit, all of a sudden, then I had another story. My bam, I became my mother's caregiver. She had Alzheimer's and she was a, uh, she was an elder abuse, um, you know, uh, survivor and, um, and I helped her survive. And, and you, you, you know, and, and the horror of seeing my mom be abused physically, emotionally, and, um, spiritually by the man who was not my father mm -hmm. and, um, wow. trying to save her. So at that point, very much like you, it's those nuances that, um, I hope that our listeners catch and, and it, you know, basically said you need, and, and I didn't even know what was, you know, I mean, the name came, he said, Mujer de Éxito Unbounded. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what the heck? That's too long. And that's a Spanglish. And you're not supposed to speak in English and in Spanish. I grew up with a father that was very, you know, he was, he, he was um, educated in Spanish. He was a med school student, right? And you don't speak Spanglish. You either speak it all in English or all in Spanish. And, and then he gives me this Mujer de Éxito Unbounded. And I'm going like, that's, Yes, I can't do that. Yeah. But you follow that gut instinct. Yes. And had it not been for that, and for you, it sounds like had it not been for the lipstick and the and the positive of creating. Mm -hmm. So so creation comes after destruction. Yes, yes. And when you say he gave you the name, uh, my first book, when he said you will write a book and he said it will be called Broken Stronger. Like that, I didn't come up with that. Yeah. But what I realized is he gave that to me right before all of this started happening. And oh. I was actually becoming broken, stronger. stronger. And that's the name of my first book. And, and once you get to that place, I feel is complete surrender, complete yes. surrender where you're like, I've got nothing left. There's nothing you can take from me but yet you're giving me everything that matters. Wow. And that was complete surrender for me. And I've never looked back. I, um, he, he told me cover, cover others in love. So even though I had thought I had forgiven my husband, I needed to cover him in love regardless. Mm -hmm. And that allows him to rest at peace, allows her to carry on, but it allows me to live. And right. um, I think for any, any women or anyone who catches this that is holding on to that, that broken piece that still hurts, um, just cover yourself first, but then cover that person in love. Mm -hmm. You don't have to mm -hmm. agree with what they did. You don't even have to understand or ask why, or you'll, you may never get those answers right. But just for God to be present and to work his magic, his miracle, cover them in love. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's such a beautiful message. And, you know, and, and um, now tell me a little bit about um, Premier Platform. That's another one of your um, income yeah. streams. You, um, you are you in corporate again? How did that come about? 
Yes, Premier Platform, everything is under my Broken Stronger LLC. Like everything right. lives under Broken Stronger. But Premier Platform was actually designed as I work primarily with women that we, we coach and we get really clear on your goals. We get really clear on your focus. And I brought a team together that we help women uh, kind of manage their finances, especially mm. if they're starting business, because mm -hmm. that's a hot mess. When you're mixing yeah. <laughs> business accounts with personal accounts, you end up spending more money than you're making and, and everything just becomes messy. And then mm -hmm. we also have a line that deals with just the burnout and emotional mm. stress. Mm. So, so the program premier platform houses phenomenal woman, which is a community that is for women entrepreneurs, but it's the, the premier platform. We give you opportunity to speak on our stages at events, to be featured as a guest expert in our community um, trainings. So I'm the platform mm. that allows you to be seen and to be heard and to get your story out, but we help you build your business. We help you get clear on what that business looks like. And so for me, it's all just the platform that rises you up. And, and that's just where that came from. And we continue to add. And that's why to me, it's just the basis of that premier platform. And we'll just add pieces and add pieces as we see the need of what mm -hmm. our clients need, really. Amazing. Amazing. Oh my gosh. You have a, you have an amazing story and I love the fact that you, you know, you came through it all and, and you're, you know, you're right here, you're shining, you're, you know, you're, you're just radiant. And I love that. And it's just like, follow, you know, you just, so I remember um, one of my favorite authors, you know, uh, used to say um, that she had come to a point, her name is Marianne Williamson. She had come to a point where um, every time she tried something because she got a message from something, she tried it. And then, and then all of a sudden the fear would come in and say, I'm not good enough. So then she would go out and learn how to do that supposedly the right way. And every time she was taught and learned how to do it the right way, it went downhill. Mm -hmm. And so then she, that's when she started like becoming, um, more like a, a, I want to say preacher, but it's not really a preacher, more like an orator, right? Speaking mm -hmm. and things like that. And somebody said to her, hey, you're really good. If you really want to get better, um, let me turn you on to this, you know, this coach. And she's going like, no, 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 <laughs> no don't do that to me. Because, yeah. you know, every time I go that route, then I end up with nothing. And yeah. she talks about, you know, she talks about all of this. And sometimes we need to, we do need support, mm -hmm. but I think the starting point, like you, the starting point was listening mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to the message that comes from within. Yes. Yes. And, and I, re I resonate with that. I, you know, I got lost in trying to do it this way and trying to listen to this person and listen to this person. And um, my faith leads everything that I do. I live mm -hmm. by my G.O.D., my grand overall designer. That's that's my G.O.D. Right. That's my main man. And and when when I finally stepped back, it's like. There are three main ways that I talk about how he gives us our messages and it's that feeling we, we underplay that intuition and that gut instincts that we have. We are gifted with a powerful tool that guides us if we if we tap into it. And the others is the thought. When those thoughts, those ideas and those images appear, that's given to you. Like that's for you. So when I started having this thought of the lipstick, it's like do it. Do it, girl. Like let's see what happens. But the other piece is experience. That's the biggest lesson. And if we keep repeating an experience that is not giving us a good result, there's a lesson that we're not learning. And what I have found is through repeated experience of just trying 
you can only be in love or you can be in fear. Everything else falls in between. So if you're not loving yourself enough to to honor what you're being drawn to, then you're going to stay in that place of fear. And none of that is going to be able to come out. It's not going to be able to come out. And so I've just thrown it all up in the air and I just run with it. But I know my compass, my guide is on my side, is yes. solid. So regardless of which way it goes, it's going to it's gonna go well. It will all be okay. And I think once I've learned that, it's... Um, I'm just here to help other other women do the same. Yeah. As soon as they say they have this idea, I'm like, what are we going to do with it? Because the idea is not wasted. It's given to you for a reason. Let's roll with it. See what happens. That's my thing. Right. The worst that can happen is you end up in the same place you are right now. Yep. And chances are that's not even going to happen because now you've gained wisdom and experience. So, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, yeah. that's, and that's so crazy. Oh, oh my God. You yeah, are... It. You are so inspiring. You are just, um, you're just this, this, you know, wealth. And it's so important. You know, sometimes I'm very, um, I tend to, to get down on myself a lot because, um, things don't move fast enough for me sometimes, you know, and I, and, and at my age over 55, right at my age, I'm like, as my dad would say, mas para allá que para acá, which means more <laughs> closer to that end of the, yeah. of, the, of the spectrum than this one, right? And so um, I beat myself up all the time, but your words are so important. You know, they are, you know, give yourself that grace, give yourself that love mm -hmm. and, um, and, and see what you've done. I, you know, I don't realize, for me personally, I don't realize how much I've done. Mm -hmm. Until somebody says to me, oh, I want to, when I grow up, I want to be like you. Yeah. Yeah. And then I look and I'm going like, me, <laughs> right? And mm -hmm. it's like, uh, or I have to write a biography and they want me to keep it at a, you know, at a paragraph, <laughs> right? you know, and I'm going like, Oh my God, you don't realize how long I've been on this earth here <laughs> and how many things I've actually done. <laughs> right. It's like, so, you know, so, but, um, but giving yourself that grace, mm -hmm. I think that that's a beautiful message. Give yourself that yes. grace. And I learned, and I will share, I learned that the hard way. I got, I got very sick. Um, mm -hmm physically myself, because I felt like I was in go mode, you know, I'm going to go, 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 I'm going to build, build, build and, and just do it. And, and I've, I've accomplished much. But God let me hit that wall, full speed ahead, mm -hmm. like head on and, and everything stopped for me. And it shut me down for about a month. And I realized that's why now I talk about achieve more, do less. Yes, because we need rest. We do. We need rest. We need to sleep. We need those moments of pure joy. We need, yeah. you know, and so it's a, it's allowed me to understand, to take care of our minute, the minute that we are in, the moment that we are having and your hour and your day and your week and even the years, they will all take care of themselves if you simply take care of your you. minute. And it really, may, it's, it's allowed me to slow down. Mm -hmm. It's allowed me to slow down and I'm still doing all the things. I'm like, why was I just not doing it at this pace before I had to learn? Wow. Yeah. And you have two boys. Yes. I have two older boys, 17 and 21. And they, I mean, we're so close. They're, they're, they're still here, you know, um, with me in our home and, um, and they saw you go through what you went through. Yeah. Yeah, so and I checked out on them for a while. I mean, I did. They, they oh, saw wow. me like lose it, and I did my best. You know, um, we we've come full circle. I've asked for forgiveness from my own children because, yeah, yeah. I mean, we are human. Yes, and all oh, that's in the end of the day, we do our best, and sometimes it's just not really what we thought was the best, but it's yeah. the best that we had at the time. Exactly. So. I know. I I um. So I tell my kids, oh, my humanness is showing. Uh -huh. And they just crack up and they're like, mom, your humanness is showing again. <laughs> like, 
it's like, well, time to put the cape back on because that's not <laughs> possible, right? We don't like that. No, so it's like, yes, my goodness. Um, this story, your story, you know, and, and your generosity, by the way, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to wear this besitos. Thanks. And by the way, you also sent me um, in this beautiful packaging, you sent me some, some, um, eyeshadows and I can you tell I love eyeshadow can you tell I love makeup <laughs> yeah you know it's like oh thank you so much and they feel so good so yeah. um I would love for you to share out where can people um you know where can people find out about you contact you just get some more of you yes to be honest the easiest place that I'm at all the time is my personal Facebook page. Um, and it's uh, speaker Elena Rodriguez. That's my Facebook. That's where I'm at all the time. But for the lipstick, there's besitosbeauty.com. And all of my websites have an option to contact me. Okay. Um, so for the lipstick, besitosbeauty.com. But if you want to know more on the empowerment women coaching business stuff, that's Premier platform dot pro. And those are Perfect. my two websites. Yep. And if you're if you're watching us on the the video cast uh, here at the YouTube channel, her links, I have the links um, later on today, I will be posting them up so that you can contact there. Uh, and, uh, next week when the audio drops, so if you're listening to this on the audio, then make sure that you go to martyangel.podbean.com because the links for her goodies will be there as well. Yes. So Elena, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. Like I said before, I hope this is not the last time that we connect. Um, my goal is to be my new goal, right, is mm -hmm. to be able to do a virtual, um, you know, a, a, a virtual um, program for, you know, uh, you know, for women who had preneurs, right. Mm -hmm. And so I would love to collaborate on that and make Definitely. it happen. Definitely. And awesome. I know that we are going to be bringing uh, we do little phenomenal woman pop up events. Uh -huh. Um, and, uh, I know California is on our radar, so okay, um, San Diego, make yep, sure it's yep, not LA. I <laughs> <laughs> I've been to San bring it Diego. On, bring it on. Yeah. Is that near Carlsbad? Is Carlsbad? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's about, you know, anywhere Carlsbad is, um, from where I am, I'm very South. So I'm right close to the border. Um, I don't know where I'm going to be. God is throwing some things at me right now. And, um, and I'm, I'm in that, I'm in that phase where, oh, the winds of change are happening, you know, <laughs> yeah, and it's totally. like, my, every time I think about it, my stomach hurts. And when my stomach hurts, when I think about it, I know that it's a message from the grander, um, you know, the, the grand, I call it the grand opera, you know, director, right? Yeah. Yeah. This, my life has been an opera. So it, for me, God is the, the grand opera director. So oh, the I grand know. opera director in my life is starting to put some of those feelings and I'm going like, but, 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 you know. <laughs> and so I can feel it, feel it, feel it. So yeah. Anyway, but, um, and those are the, you know, those are what we talk about, mm -hmm. but thank you so much. And yes, let's keep in touch and, um, thank sure. you so much. And, uh, once again, is your book out on, um, broken stronger? Is yeah. it out in the both in, books? Yeah. The both books are on the premier platform.pro okay. website. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Both books are there. So there's good. also some free downloads too. Um, okay. there's a seven, um, seven morning habits to slay your day. Um, that's a freebie, you know, so there's definitely a lot of stuff out there on the premier platform dot pro for your list. Beautiful, beautiful. I am so incredibly grateful to you and to each and every one of our watchers and our listeners. And I just wish you the best of luck and continue to go forward and prosper. And I am, you know, just reminding everybody here that if you're watching us on the Coach Marty Angel YouTube site, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell so you know when we drop a new episode. And if you are 
anywhere listening to us on the podcast, the way that they that they do these statistics is um, please download the podcast. You can get rid of it once you're done. And uh, but the but the downloading of the podcast is what counts for the metrics. So thank you for this beautiful day. Great virtual hug virtual Yay. hug. <laughs> Have a great one. Thank you everybody for watching. Have a beautiful day. Namaste. This episode brought to you by Celevive Hydrating and Lifting Sheet Mask. The Celevive Hydrating and Lifting Sheet Mask locks in intense moisture to perfectly prime your skin for restful sleep. Apply this relaxing hydration serum several times a week to pamper yourself and radiate your healthier looking complexion. Sheet masking is all the rage right now. Make it a regular part of your healthy skincare regimen today. Celevive Hydrating and Lifting Sheet Mask. Click the link below and get yours today.